Hey, what's happening everyone? Welcome back to another video and today we're going to be taking a look at this Blitzwolf camera lens for your smartphone. And what we have here is not the multiple lens type. In fact, this one is the single lens type. So we get a bunch of things in here and that's pretty cool. So we get a really nice feeling pouch. It's actually pretty slippery. I don't know if there's a material on it or something. And uh, that looks like a face. And inside we get two pouches, one of them is for contact and feedback, and the manual. And this is a 3 times zoom lens, so we should be getting some really cool bokeh, or blurred background. And man, this is one of the best microfiber cloths that I have ever laid my hands on. It feels like velvet, it is really really soft, it's like silky. It is just silky smooth, okay. so. Yeah, we get a pouch, we get a microfiber cloth that is actually pretty useful and feels really nice, not like the generic ones. Uh, we get the clip, which is how you mount this thing, get the lens and a lens hood, as well as a lens cap. And check this thing out, it looks pretty awesome. So yeah, it is actually pretty heavy, it's just metal and glass, no plastic whatsoever. And there's where your smartphone will be. And basically how this works is you clip it on here and you mount it onto your smartphone. Now unfortunately my G4 has died two weeks ago and I was going to use its amazing camera to test out this product but unfortunately I will try to get in touch with LG and see if I can get it repaired. But for now we're going to be using the Xiaomi Mi 5 for the test and we're going to see how it performs. So basically how this works uh, from what I've seen is basically is you get this thing and you clip it on and you also want to make sure that your camera lens is actually clean and then you want to take this and then you want to go ahead and screw this in and you're done. That's pretty much it. So in my case there was a lot of vignetting and I'm guessing that is because of the case because it's actually rising it and pushing the lens away from the camera. So you want to take this apart, make sure it's clean and you want to try that one more time. So let's go ahead and try that out. And then you want to go ahead and just adjust it here, eyeball it, make sure it's perfectly centered and uh, yeah let's try it one more time. There we go, much better. And yes you can obviously adjust it more to get a better performance. But let's go ahead and try something out. But let's go ahead and try this out and see what it looks like. And the image quality does look pretty clean on the display here. But I'm going to go ahead and take a few snaps inside my room here and see what it looks like. And then we're actually going to go ahead and go outside and see what kind of pictures we could take with this lens before and after within the built-in camera which is the wide angle and the 3 times zoom with this lens. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Alright, we are back and this video should have been up about a month ago. I had a bunch of things happen. Uh, my G4 was fixed, it actually took only a month. And I also had to fix a bunch of things in the studio. But at the same time, I also wanted to get some more photos using this lens. I wanted to go outside, get some photos with squirrels, birds, and see how it does with nature. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to and now this video is pretty delayed. So anyways, let's get right into it and take a look at the selection of photos that I have taken and see what we have here. So the first thing here is we have my PSP on my desk with room lighting, the usual lights that I have. So I have three lights, really powerful. And you can pretty much expect a couple things. One of them being less light. A second of all, a lot of haze. You can tell from the edges they're pretty warped. And the uh, last thing you're going to notice, there's vignetting around the edges. Now, it's going to be really hard to get rid of them. Uh, depending on what kind of phone camera you have, you'll get more or less. And if you have a case, that will increase the vignetting and the warped effect. But if you take a look at the center of the photo, it's pretty much in focus. But again, the edges here are pretty hazy and uh, distorted. Now, this is something that people like to call the toy camera effect, which is pretty cool. It gives you a nice effect. It makes things dramatic. And now, if we back off a bit with the lens, you can see more in focus, more dramatic effect. And then later, you'll see that it is best to take photos with something that is right around this area. Once you have something right in this area, it will be focused and pretty much everything else will be warped and distorted and it will look really, really cool. So right now this is a dramatic photo. Obviously you can edit it in Photoshop, increase the brightness, add more contrast or whatever you want to do and make it look that much better. Especially if you're into photography like me. Um, obviously I would go use Snapseed since already on your phone but if you want to get that detail then go ahead and use Photoshop or Lightroom. Now moving on, uh, this is another photo. This is adjusted in my camera settings since I could shoot raw but Seems like an taken raw, taken in JPEG, but anyways, um, you can see uh, much brighter. It looks much nicer, kind of. But again, the center is pretty focused. You can tell the pixels, and that said, the PSB is a pretty low resolution screen. But this was actually with my Xiaomi phone, so later you'll see the other photos were taken with my LG. Once again, lots of hazing, center in focus, and vignetting. Moving on, uh, here's a close up of the buttons, so another test here. And then here's another look at it with better adjustments and everything. So I have used the lens to my advantage and adjusted some camera settings to get the best looking photo. So I made sure that I get the right angle and have the console dead in center to get that really nice focused and warped edges effect kind of thing. So I can see it's a really nice photo. Uh, I can crop it out and then get rid of this vignetting on the edges. 
and you can get something like this and hey that looks like a great photo uh pretty focused it's dramatic and it looks cool and here's what the photo looks like with my phone at the same distance without the lens so everything is pretty much in focus and it's pretty standard it's pretty boring um that's what it looks like close up and then we can take a look at that distance so about two feet or so two and a half feet maybe and that's where i took the photo right here and yeah and then once again that is the same composition i believe and once again that is without the lens and that is without the lens all right so here are the photos side by side uh on the left side is the lens on the right side is my phone also the phone is a tiny bit closer than the lens here but if we zoom in and take a look at the uh, overall quality the one without the lens is much better and that is probably because the phone um went for a lower iso and while on the lens since there's less light it decided to change the settings so all this can change photos are going to vary when you have a lens like this but to give you an idea here's a similar side by side comparison you can see how warped everything is in here and you can see how clean and pretty much overall sharp the overall image with the photo that is without the lens and you can see the difference you can tell which one you like and one last photo here you can see the difference uh wide angle zoom lens zoom lens more dramatic very nice looking and the wide angle just boring so simple as that it's just really boring a quick look at the flare here you can see how the lens reacts to having direct sunlight or a direct light source and you can see what the flaring looks like it's pretty bad um just all over the place just tons of haze the all over the lens again it's dramatic it gives it that toy camera effect but that's what it looks like and now here's a photo that actually looks really cool so this is a photo i believe with the zoom lens and you can see how dramatic everything is all around edges it's like going outward and it looks really cool it's a good photo and usually usually flower photos are pretty boring when people take them on their phone you gotta really get a really solid composure so not all your photos are gonna look like this you gotta have the right angle and the right lighting and you gotta know what you're doing when you want to take a photo of a flower without making it look boring so here's a tip if you want to take a better flower photo get close to one single flower that looks nice that looks clean that is pretty nicely lit get close on it focus take the photo so here's one photo with the lens and you can see it's pretty cool it's pretty clean um especially for a phone photo and i believe this one is taken with my g4 from now on all the other photos are taken with my g4 phone and you can see what it looks like and now if you go back to my regular lens on my phone that's what it looks like wide angle boring photo kind of boring uh you can crop it obviously and make it look better but once again it's it's pretty it's pretty standard stuff and then if you go in with my phone with the wide angle and focus on the pedals um you get a very similar photo the lighting is kind of off don't worry about that but the blur effect is much less there's less bokeh and here's what it pretty much looks like side by side this is the lens this is the wide angle phone there's a whole lot of things going on so once again you have the haze less light vignetting it all adds to that dramatic effect in this photo it works very well and it also causes the camera to get better color of the petals usually cameras have problems with pink and red and whatnot uh, phone cameras that is but you can see the difference here. Now I would say this is a really good lens to take with you if you want to take photos, dramatic photos of flowers. Definitely it's something that this lens can excel in. And once again, side by side, here's the difference, one with the lens, one without. The photos speak for themselves. So, yeah. Moving on, here's a picture of some rocks. Again, the vignetting effect is very dramatic here because the lens is kind of shifted, and you can see on the left side, there's not a lot of vignetting going on because the lens is shifted. Once again, dramatic zoom effect going on. Yeah, it's more like a zoom effect. And once again, here it is without the lens. Uh, pretty standard stuff. And here it is with the same photo with my phone closer to the ground. So side by side close up, uh, similar framing, but not similar distance. If you take a look at the similar distance, you'll get this. So there you go. Here's a couple photos of some spiders. You can see what it looks like. Uh, you can get pretty close with the lens. Uh, this is very useful if you don't want to get close to your spider. So this is without it. This is with it, I believe. And uh, with this one, you can see all the flies here. That's with my phone camera. And if you go here, this is a much nicer dramatic effect. Obviously, you can imagine editing this and turning it into a really cool photo. That's what it looks like without the lens. Uh, similar photo, but there's a whole lot of detail that is lost. But if you take a look here, it's much nicer. And if you notice here that there is some blurriness, and that is because um, it's windy outside and i was holding a zoom lens which is something that you're going to have to deal with if you're trying to focus and third of all my g4 
it uses laser autofocus. So that is something you want to think about. Because if you don't know, the G4 has a laser focusing mechanism that is beside the camera, and when that is covered, it goes wrong. So it was really hard to get the focus right, and at the same time, uh, it was windy, shutter speed, lighting, all that. But overall, uh, if you get it right, this would look great. And you can see the before and after of editing, a uh, much nicer photo, much cooler looking, and overall pretty dramatic. And finally, two more samples. We got some bricks. You can see what the composition looks like. The video is getting pretty long, but again, pretty dramatic. Close up, close up, more focused. Um, camera lens, and that's pretty much it. You can see. And yeah, it's pretty bad when it comes to distortion, but again, that is the toy camera effect that some people actually go for and they would like to have. Yeah, you can see what it looks like. Uh, road, dramatic, much dramatic. Again, dramatic dramatic and that's it anyways that is actually pretty much it for this video um it's kind of long i don't know how long this video is going to be but yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed this video it's pretty different i did want to make these kind of videos a long time ago with cameras i do plan to have some kind of camera series where i'll take really crappy cameras and make really good photos out of them uh show you guys how to edit them show you guys how to take them and see what we could do i actually have the psp camera i have my ps vita and i want to do some kind of challenge uh, if you're into photography, you'd probably know the cheap camera challenge from Digital Rap TV. So uh, it's going to be similar to that, but just me. And I really don't know how I'm going to film all of that. But anyways, that is actually pretty much it for this video. So you're probably hearing my keyboard click. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe for content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.